Hi, everyone. Welcome to this M2D2 talk. Um, thank you so much for being here today. Um, today, our speaker is Sam Chen. He'll be talking about his work entitled Structure Aware Protein in Self Supervised Learning. Sam is a <clears throat> PhD student at Milan and, and McGill University. He has previously graduated from the University of Science and Technology of China and have interned at Microsoft Asia, Sinovation, Venture, Tencent, and Baidu. He is broadly interested in the topic of meta learning, offline M MBO, and AI for science. Thank you so much, Cam, Sam, for accepting my invitation to present your work here today and looking forward to the talk. Okay. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Um, shall I begin now? Okay. Yes. Uh, uh, hello, everyone. This is Han Sim Chen. And today I'm going to present my paper, Structure Aware Protein Cell Stress Learning Accepted by Bioinformatics. Uh, my presentation has four parts today. The first part is the background. I will discuss the problem background about the protein variable learning, self stress learning. And uh, I will discuss the motivation for this work. I will discuss the method details and uh, the experimental results. Uh, first, problem background. Uh, protein representative learning has shown great potential to many downstream tasks. Uh, such as protein conservation. Uh, for example, uh, this binary conservation, we just classify the protein into membrane protein and non member protein. Uh, so, previous these deep learning based methods, uh, they proved to be very effective. One major obstacle to such approach is that the number of the neighbor data is limited. Uh, Self-supervised learning is a promising solution to addressing insufficient neighbors proteins. Uh, generally, we have a protein, and uh, by self-supervised learning, we can have an effective remination of this protein. Based on this effective remination, we can do some downstream tasks, for example, classification, regression, etc. Uh, current self-supervised learning methods they are mostly sequence-based, and they do not explicitly model transformation of proteins. And uh, I will illustrate now. Uh, first, some uh, background on protein sequence. Uh, each protein is a sequence of residues linked by the, pep by the peptide bond. Um, residue A, residue G, residue P, and residue A. And there are general 20 different types of residues that are linked by the peptide bond. And this example is not realistic because there is not, uh, this peptide is too short. And uh, I use this example only for illustration. Sequence based uh, cell cell methods like uh, protein bird, they mask part of the residues. For example, we mask this residue G and the pre trained model by using the masked protein sequence. A, mask, P, A, to predict the masked residue, G, by just uh, minimizing the following part. This can yield effective representation for protein, but uh, in this process, no structures are involved. Okay, uh, background on protein structure. Uh, the most important information of protein structure is the pairwise residue residue distance, DIG, between residue I and residue J. We can see that uh, this DIG is something like this. But uh, this distance information alone cannot fully determine the protein background due to the free rotation of the chemical bonds around the alpha carbon. Okay, more specifically, it's like this the rotation of the N C alpha bond and the rotation of C alpha C beta bond, uh, the dihedral angles Y and psi, they also important for the protein background structure. Okay, so the motivation here is how to incorporate 
this transformation into self science learning? Uh, we have two points. The first point is that we want to design novel and effective sales running tasks to predict the razor razor distance, DIG. For example, we want to just input the protein graph and uh, to predict the distance between A, G, G, A, and A, P. Uh, we also want to predict the dihedral angles because dihedral angles uh, they are also important for the protein bed bond structure. Uh, this is the angle prediction. Okay. Uh, the second part, second point is that we want to leverage. Okay. You have some. Yes. Um, one question about the residue residue distance. How do you get that? Uh, is it? Uh, the... It's just the, the alpha carbon distance of two residues. We just read the PDB file. Okay, so it's just alpha carbon. Okay, thank you. Yeah, yeah. And uh, okay, uh, we want to leverage a sequential information because uh, after all, the number of protein sequence is much larger than the number of correct um, protein structure, although we have alpha 2. Uh, here is the motivation. And uh, on the method part, uh, to sum up, we propose structure where protein, so it's a protein self supervised learning steps uh, consisting of three parts. The first part is protein modeling. We just uh, mo we mainly model this protein as graph and using the graph network to do the modeling. And the second is self supervised learning. Uh, we design two self self supervised learning tasks: the distance prediction and uh, the angle prediction. And uh, the hidden relation is used uh, to reconstruct the distance metric and the dihedral angles. And uh, after the pre-training, the hidden relation can be used for uh, the downstream tasks. The third part is pseudo optimization uh, because we want to identify the relation between the sequential optimization and the structural optimization. Uh, I will talk about this part in details in later. Okay, um, protein modeling. Uh, we, uh, like I said before, we adopt gene paramized Amiga to encode the pairwise ratio distance and uh, the dihedral angle. Uh, this is a protein structure and uh, we model this structure as a graph. There's an edge between two ratios if the distance is less than seven. And uh, there's no edge if the distance is large than seven. And after we obtain this graph, we can input this graph into this gene. For the dihedral angle information, uh, we encode the scanner angle X into an angle vector by the following kernel function. Uh, here, gamma is just a constant that determines the kernel shape. And the UJ is the centers, just the encoding centers, for example, if we have 10 centers, then this encoding function encode this scanner angle X into a 10 dimension angle vector. And this is how we uh, just uh, encode the pairwise distance information and the dihedral angle information. Okay, uh, here is just, uh, uh, just the GN part, it's just uh, some normal GN. Denote the, the Node information for the S node in the case layer of the gene as HIK. We can obtain this HIK by this aggregation and uh, this uh, combination. Uh, this aggregation and this combination, the uh, aggregation is a sum function, com combines the linear layer for feature, for feature transformation. Uh, here, S0 just uh, refer refers to the initial node features and the this is uh, H0. And uh, this EIV, the H feature, just refers to the inverse of the square of the pairwise ratio distance. And this is the uh, gene we adopt. OK. Uh, we propose uh, cell two self surrounding tasks, the distance prediction and the angle prediction. Distance prediction and angle prediction. And the distance prediction just uh, preserves the pairwise ratio 
distance information. It's more like a global information. And uh, this angle prediction just uh, preserves the angle information, the dihedral angle information. It's more like a local information. And in this way, uh, if we have these two tasks, this pre-trained Z model, it can yield effective protein recognition that can capture the overall global and local protein structure information. Uh, huh? Now it's the distance prediction task. Uh, we model this distance prediction as a classification task instead of regression, since the numerical scale is uh, quite different uh, in the distance metric. Even in the same protein, the numerical scale is quite different. Uh, how do we obtain this constraint label? Uh, we divide uh, the distance into T uniform beams. Uh, in this presentation, we just uh, use T equal to six for simple illustration. And the every bean just corresponds to a certain class. Uh, this is the bean function. Given a razor razor distance five, we have this. Okay, you had a question? You... Oh, oh, sorry. Um, I was wondering why you convert that into regression. Is there like, if you convert that into sorry, why do you convert that in, in classification? Because by doing so, uh, yeah, you, by doing so, you know you know the some information. Um, but uh, uh, the first reason is that the numerical scale is quite different in the distance metric. Uh, so if we use as, uh? could we elaborate on why the numerical scale is is different? Like, I don't I, I don't get that one. Uh, it's like uh, for example. Some razor razor distance may be very, very small. Some may be very, very big. So if you do it in regression, it may not be very appropriate. But if you do it in classification, uh, it can maybe do the, it can do the optimization better. The second reason is that we uh, respond in the rebuttal and uh, the reviewer also asked a question, and uh, we uh, just uh, uh, because the uh, classification formation is better for the multi, multi, how, how do we say this? Multi model distribution. But when the distance is like this, if we use this classification formation, it can be better. Okay. Uh, do um, I make myself? Yeah. Um... I'm still not sure I understand, but we can we can continue. Thank you. Okay, okay. Thank you for your question. Okay. Um, given a razor razor distance, for example, five, we can just get this corresponding label uh, three. And this label is like a zero, zero, one half label at this position three at one. And uh, okay. We introduce a distance prediction in the work. It's just uh, two fully cracking layers with a random activation in the middle. It takes the vector difference of the hidden representation as input and aims to predict uh, the uh, distance uh, label. This DIG is a T dimensional vector. It represents the predicted distance label between Rezu i and Rezu j over the T classes. Uh, after we get this. Uh, Prediction is a probability vector. We can optimize cross entropy loss among all razor pairs, like uh, this using the cross entropy. There v is the number of all residues. Um, this is for the distance prediction. For the angle prediction, is similar. We mask 55% angles and feed uh, them, feed the graph into an angle prediction network. Here, uh, HIM is a masked hidden representation for the S ratio. And uh, this neural work is also a two fully calculated layers with a random activation in the middle. It aims to reconstruct these two dihedral angles. Okay, uh, uh, with this prediction, we can compute this prediction mass as something like this. Uh, here, M is just the set of masked residues. This is an angle prediction mass. 
Okay. Uh, to sum up, this sales machine learning the overall loss is the distance prediction loss plus this angle prediction loss. Uh, this function can be compactly written as something like this. Theta is the protein energy model parameter. Amiga is the GM model parameter. And alpha is the prediction word parameter. Okay, we have this overall loss. Uh, okay, you have to... Yeah, one more question about the, the, how do you handle the different scale of the loss in equation 10? Because we have one classification loss plus one regression loss. Oh, uh, I just uh, use one one. I do not uh, care too much about this part. Okay. The one one, yeah. Okay. But I suppose you can, uh, use some validation set to tune the parameters using the pre-training validation loss as the evaluation metric, choose the best parameters. Okay, thanks for Thank your question. Sure. And, uh, okay, to sum up, this function is like this. Uh, but uh, the protein energy model theta and the GM model parameter, uh, I think, well, we think that they should be kind of related since every protein sequence corresponds to its structure. So uh, uh, every protein sequence corresponds to its structure and the sequence is uh, pre-trained parameter theta and the structure pre-trained parameters is omega. So their parameters should be regular in some extent. So how to identify their relation? Okay, um, as we can see that uh, this is a protein sequence, AGPA. Uh, this is a sequential recognition. This is more related to its uh, structure recognition if they correspond to the same protein. And uh, it's less related to the structure recognition if these are different protein. So we can just identify the mutual information. We can identify the relation between the pre-trained energy model parameter theta and the GM parameters omega by maximizing the mutual information between this sequential remediation and this uh, structure remediation. Okay, more formally is that like, uh, we denote X as a protein sample and uh, X theta as another sample. Then we can estimate the mutual information between the sequential remediation and the structure remediation as something like this. Uh, this is just uh, some previous work. Uh, T beta is uh, some discriminator. It has parameters beta. And the uh, SP is just uh, some is soft plus function. So, uh, this T beta fit the positive and negative samples into a three layer fully connected network with jumping and ReLU, and then output the data product of the two organizations. OK. Here is for this part, how do we estimate the mutual information between the sequential remediation and the structure remediation? Okay, uh, the above process can be formulated as a dynamization problem uh, in the year level by maximizing the mutual information. We can identify the relation between the pre-trained model parameter, theta, and the GN parameters, omega. Just the, in the other level, we can optimize the GN parameters omega and the prediction network of parameters alpha by using this relation. Uh, the inner level can be solved approximately by a gradient ascent step. We just uh, approximate solve this equation 15 as something like this. Uh, here we mean pseudo parameter. Pseudo means that uh, we do not actually update theta. In fact, we only use this uh, theta Amiga relation. And uh, in the end, the model used original theta. We only use this uh, theta Amiga relation in the equation 14. Uh, similarly, the R level can be solved uh, by some gradient uh, ascent step. Just uh, solve this Amiga and alpha. Amiga is a GM parameter, alpha is a prediction network parameter. We sum them respectively for equation 14, yeah. And uh, this is for the method part. And now uh, we can go to the experiments for the pre-training. Uh, data set, 
uh, we sample a size uh, 40,000 uh, set from the R4 database. The model we adapt is a uh, two layer uh, the model with a hidden size as 1,218. Uh, and we, for the language model, we use the pre-trained protein bird model. Uh, for the optimization, we use a cosine learning red uh, decay for 10 impacts. Uh, the learning red is this for the gene, learning red is this for the protein language model. We use the ADA optimizer to update the gene with uh, this, uh, this thing. Okay. Uh, we conduct, uh, after this pre-training, we want to use, uh, we need a way to evaluate whether this training is good or not. So we use this fine tuning to evaluate the performance of the pre training. We conduct experiments on three constraint tasks. Uh, C2 is the is a binary constraint task, just the classifying the protein into membrane and the number per protein. And uh, the train test size is uh, something like this. And the C10 is a location constraint task. It just uh, classifies the protein into 10 senior compartments with the uh, train test size like this. And the last one is C300 and 84, just uh, the enzyme catalyzed the reaction concentration into three at four easy numbers with the uh, trend size and this. Uh, we report the mean accuracy as the final evaluation metric. And uh, yeah, uh, now is, uh, I'll discuss some just uh, baselines. We mainly compare with two kinds of baselines, two groups, two groups of baselines. The first group is uh, baselines without pre-training. Uh, we use BLAST. Plus, uh, just uh, a test sequence receives labels from all labeled training sequence with the score being the pairwise sequence identity. Uh, I.E. Kung Fu on this paper is an academic paper. It just uh, introduced NAFO convolution and uh, pooling apparatus to model uh, proteins. These are the baselines for uh, without pre training. For baselines with pre training, uh, we adapt the pre-trained language model, just the simple pre-trained language model, the protein, protein bird. Uh, we feed these uh, uh, features from the pre-trained language model into a linear layer. Uh, this uh, uh, protein language model feature is like we average on the ratio representation. Uh, the second uh, is uh, deep FRI is just the uh, input. It has uh, an LSTM uh, to extract uh, the sequential feature and then feed this uh, structural feature and the pre-trained sequential feature into the uh, GCN. And the third baseline is steps without launch model. We just uh, pre-trained our proposed method, the gene, without considering the protein launch model. Um, for the, uh, this is uh, just baseline from other papers. For the proposed steps, we fine tune both the gene model and the linear head for downstream adjusted tasks. Besides, we use steps H as just the means head to denote the steps with only fine tuning the linear head for certain downstream tasks. Okay, this is the comparison methods. And uh, here are some experimental results. Uh, table one experiment results for C2, and the table two is for C10. This is for C385. Uh, as we can see, that uh, our method steps uh, performs well. Uh, we also conduct some available studies in three tasks by removing every design component. Uh, we remove the mutual information estimation. We remove the volumization. We remove the angle prediction. We remove the distance prediction, the self supervised self learning tasks, angle prediction, and the distance prediction. And the final part is our steps. Uh, as we can see, that every design component is uh, important for this method in this paper. 
uh, we can also observe that uh, uh, the distance prediction task, uh, when we remove the distance prediction, the cell choice learning, um, the performance degrade is uh, the largest. And this means that, uh, in fact, the most important, uh, and this is because the most important information about the protein structure is that uh, the razor razor distance, because with razor razor distance, you can have uh, just uh, a rough protein structure. So this is uh, very uh, important. Uh, here are the references. That's the full some reference paper of the baselines and the pre-trained models. Uh, thanks for listening. Do you have, oh, you have a restaurant here? Yeah, I just had a question about um, this particular figure. So um, one thing was, that was striking is, uh, for example, the angles were not important in C2, but then in C10 and C384, kind of way, way, way more important. So could we kind of just elaborate on why there's this huge gap in, like the angle become hugely important in C10 and and, and the C384? Uh, you mean the angle prediction important in C10 and the C384, right? Yeah. Um, uh, I suppose maybe that uh, the, this uh, location has fiction and this enzyme, uh, these uh, two classes, they just uh, maybe, I, I'm not an expert in biology, I suppose maybe they rely more on the local structures like the dihedral angles. Or maybe that uh, this is because this C2 task is too easy that uh, we just, uh, even we remove this angle on uh, self learning task, it can still perform well. Uh, do I make myself clear? Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your questions. And uh, okay, and there are two, uh, two, 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 two audience, they just raise their hand. You can ask us a question. Yeah. Yeah, hi. Um, uh, yeah, my yeah. question is, um, if you, like I saw that you basically like discretize the, um, you basically discretize the, uh, pairwise distance matrix, right? Uh, you, yeah, you know, yeah. Even exactly. late, you turn it categorical treated. instead of yeah. And so I, I guess my first question was, um, what made you? What was your reasoning for setting up the distances in? It looked like one point five angstrom increments. Um, uh, in fact, I uh, this is not uh, this this discrimination is not something we propose. We just uh, follow uh, two papers. One paper is from KD. They just model this uh, protein structure using this uh, uh, discretization. Another is from a natural machine intelligence. They pre-train some molecule recognition. They use the same technique. And we just follow this tradition. This is not something lofty we propose. OK. Um, so I, if, if you guys are discretizing that data and making it categorical, um, yeah. then, um, I was just curious why, why didn't, um, what made you not want to like try to, um, make joint representations of the sequence and structure data. I mean, one of the reasons why you wouldn't do that is if you had pairwise distance matrices that were continuous and then you have, you know, your categorical data, which uh... are protein sequences, but if everything's sort of categorical, why not just make a scene, you know what I mean? And then train and then train a single neural network on that, like because it looks like you have you know a separate neural network. Um, yeah, yeah, and yeah. A separate one why, for the, LR, for the one reason is that uh, yeah, um, the we we use uh, because there are much more protein sequence in the nature, and there are some public available pre-trained protein language model. And we can just use it. We do not have enough resources to just uh, pre-train on so, you don't, so many. So you, 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 didn't have a, you didn't have a structure for every single sequence that you had, is what you're saying, right? Uh, yeah, And yes, that's why the, you couldn't make joint. OK, gotcha. That makes sense. Yeah. We do not have enough sources to pre-train on so large data set. OK, thank you for your question. 